What were you known for throughout the whole school? 10th grade, choked on the cap of a pen, lost consciousness. Ambulance, stretcher. To let the ambulance pass, they had to stop the buses. After that, I was forever nicknamed Cap. My sister once put a stapler in her mouth during class, and then for some reason she pressed down on it and choked on a staple. The ambulance came and took her to the hospital. As a result, a rumor spread throughout the school that she had swallowed the stapler itself. It was quite curious. I accidentally burned myself during chemistry class. Unexpected reaction from a super cool experiment involving a bunch of chemical elements? Or did you just stand too close to the burner? I grabbed a full jar of ethanol that someone had given me, realized it was hot, exclaimed oops, dropped it right onto myself and voila, I was on fire. Back in the days when Facebook was a novelty that parents didn't even know about, I had an album of selfies where I stood in front of the mirror and posed next to my toilets. It was aptly titled, Me and the Thrones I've Conquered. Eventually, the album became so legendary that people would ask me to come to their homes and take a dump in their toilet. Lol. I was known for once, attaching a giant 6 by 9 meter poster to the school flagpoles with the word for sale written on it. It listed the number of rooms, bathrooms, and the principal's contact information in case anyone decided to buy. From kindergarten to my final year of high school, I never spoke to anyone except for my closest family members. Seriously, not a single person. This was because I had selective mutism, which prevented me from completing oral tasks at school. So everyone knew me as that silent guy. Interestingly, no one ever made fun of me for it. Perhaps it seemed pointless to tease someone who couldn't respond. Gradually, I was just excluded from various social groups until I was completely alone. And by the way, this became a turning point in my story. I had two options. Either I would remain alone forever, or I would conquer this damn selective mutism and start speaking. And I started speaking. Well, not immediately, but that's a whole different story. Honestly, for my butt. In 12th grade, everyone voted that I had the most appetizing buns. And as a reward, they gave me a box of honey buns. In 7th grade, I transferred to a new school on the other side of town where nobody knew me. Just for fun, I decided to fake a British accent for the entire school year. And everything was going well until the beginning of 8th grade when I forgot about it and started speaking normally. The whole school was completely confused. It's crazy how committed I was to maintaining a British accent for a whole year. Well, first of all, I was the weird dude with a skateboard. Secondly, once during class, some little brat, about three years younger than us, came up to the window and started banging on it like crazy. My buddy and I couldn't take it anymore, so we stormed out onto the street, grabbed the kid, and stuffed him into a trash can right in front of his friends. So, we were also known as the guys who throw kids into trash cans. I wasn't really against it, to be honest. In middle school, everyone knew me as the guy who styled his hair before and after every class, and now I have no hair. The perfect hairstyle, but at what cost? Two words, giant breasts. Seriously, they were so big that in 12th grade, I had to undergo breast reduction surgery. If you don't mind, could you tell me how it affected your life in high school? It was physically impossible for me to adhere to the school dress code. Running in gym class was agonizing. And there were also situations where, approaching my friends, I would hear them joking about my breasts. Me and my friends were known for being able to eat a can of canned beans in one gulp during lunch. But why? Was there some sort of biological warfare going on with some jerk teacher? No, it was just a mandatory requirement for joining the Bean Clan. Tell me more about the Bean Clan. The first rule of the Bean Clan is, don't talk about the beans. I was known as the guy who applauds for too long. Whenever we had some school award ceremony, I always kept clapping longer than everyone else. I was known for having a sexual relationship with a watermelon, which I didn't. And we believed you, watermelon maniac. I ran a parody Twitter account impersonating our school principal. It was so cool when my classmates read tweets to each other without knowing I wrote them. But later on, I got exposed. Our principal went ballistic over that account. My buddy once made a page with memes about our small rural school with around 400 students. Initially, the memes were actually pretty good, but then one of our teachers suddenly started behaving like a complete jerk, which prompted my friend to start making memes about him. As a result, someone from the students documented everything with screenshots and showed it to the school administration. Teachers began to investigate who was behind it all. Two weeks later, they found out it was my buddy and expelled him from school. Rumors circulated about me being a witch and a Satanist capable of cursing people. It all started quite accidentally during P.E., when some guy said something rude to me. 
I gave him a sinister look, after which someone almost immediately accidentally hit him with a soccer ball between the legs. Suddenly, everyone started thinking that I had ominous superpowers. I don't know how it happened that everyone ruled out the possibility that it could have just been a hilarious coincidence. I attended a boarding school. My roommate and I were known as the hustlers who sold everything, from chips and cookies to tobacco products and medications. In 10th and 12th grades, I worked as a cashier in the school kiosk, which allowed me to earn money from fellow students and sell them our goods. I collected money from them, wrote down the orders for my buddy, and sent them for the stash. By the way, funny story. Five years after school, someone at the alumni reunion remembered our little store, and several guys immediately reacted like, oh right, I still owe you money. As a result, I was treated to free alcohol until I lost consciousness. I made a wooden dildo during my craft class and then placed it on the desk of our English teacher, who is quite promiscuous. When she stepped out of the classroom for a couple of seconds, I acted so quickly and calmly that nobody noticed it lying there. And the funniest part is not that I wasn't punished for it. On the contrary, she laughed at the situation even more than everyone else in the class and was even grateful for such a gift. Nobody could believe what was happening. Now I remember this story and regret that I didn't sand it. In school, I was the best player in RuneScape. God, can we also get even a little bit of attention from girls? When I was little, my family moved from Australia to Fiji for a year. During that time, I attended the main international school in the capital city. In this school, popularity among the cool guys essentially depended on your level in RuneScape. And it wasn't some nerdy party. Every single guy was into the game without exception. That's how it was in 2007. Last year, everyone called me the pencil guy. I always wore a trench coat and stuffed a bunch of pencils into the inner pockets, which I constantly sharpened. Once I lent them to someone to count, and it turned out there were about 200 of them in there. What a stash. Well, during math class, I accidentally hit a guy in the face with a tennis racket and almost got sent to the principal's office because of it. As a result, he and I started dating and others began to get scared when they saw me with a racket. When you tell him dinner is served, does he happen to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder? There was this guy who in 10th grade just puked right in the middle of the hallway during break. That guy wouldn't happen to be you, would it? I was known as the guy who got into bars. You see, my older brother played in a band, and I always tried to tag along with him to help with the equipment. I was sort of the group's technician, you could say. Most bars allowed me to hang out near the stage during performances, and then help pack everything up afterward. So I was a 15-year-old guy who spent every weekend in bars. My parents and teachers knew about it, but nobody cared because I wasn't drinking. But other guys at school were just dying to join my parties. They always asked me to take them along somehow. I was the guy with a good printer who knew Photoshop and could make any ID. Thanks to everyone for watching. Write in the comments what the whole school knew you for. See you in the next episode.